for more, let's bring in Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. He joins us now live from Sydney. Um, Mark, good morning to you. Certainly, it is all about that March meeting. We are seeing uh, investors certainly positioning themselves for an interest rate hike uh, in just a couple of weeks' time. Um, give us your take on that commentary coming through from Yellen. Yeah, good morning, Natalie. I mean, I, I guess to kind of reiterate John's points uh, from earlier, he, he, you know, Janet Yellen has certainly positioned the market for that hike. She's certainly expecting it um, in terms of the language that she used as well. She said that uh, you know, um, monetary uh, policy is now uh, moderately uh, accommodative, and that's changed from modestly before. So that's a slight subtle change as well. Again, positioning the market, and again, Stanley Fisher as well, speaking on, at a separate function on Friday night, basically said, look, over the last three months, there hasn't been any economic data that's coming weak. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen the economic data that's coming weak, but again, it's the Fed talking, um, you know, it up the strength of the U.S. economy, positioning the market as has been priced in now for that interest rate hike next week, and it's going to take some really, really kind of off uh, target uh, data from either non-farm payrolls on Friday or um, CPI or retail sales to kind of blow the Fed off course for that uh, first hike uh, next week. So I think the, the markets have strangely accepted that. And as John highlighted, you know, the equity markets have taken that in their stride, uh, which is quite, quite strange. And even the bond markets, you know, after you know, pricing in, um, you know, increasing that probability during last week, you know, even on Friday, the two years was fairly unchanged at, at uh, current levels. And the 10 year was only a, maybe a couple of basis points. So, uh, further um, higher as well. So the market's reasonably relaxed. I think the Fed has got the market positioned uh, exactly right. Interestingly, though, in, in Janet Yellen's commentary as well, and one thing that I think the, you know, the longer end of the bond market uh, certainly did look for, there wasn't really any hawkish commentary in terms of how the future um, interest rate hikes would, would follow through. So you know, the market's still pricing in three this year. I've still got a sneaking suspicion it's probably going to be a bit less. And uh, also as well, Janet Yellen was very keen to stress that none of her economic forecasts or none of her commentary did incorporate any uh, positive impact from uh, a Donald Trump fiscal stimulus. Uh, she still sees that as very much in the air and very difficult to ascertain what will actually get uh, finalized uh, after passing through the, uh, the various houses on Capitol Hill. So, you know, there is potential upside, um, but she still thinks that the Fed is certainly in front of the curve with regards to interest rate uh, hikes. And but uh, it looks like March is uh, pretty much a done deal, Natalie. Well, certainly on that idea of um, commentary surrounding the Trump White House Fed Chair Janet Yellen saying that at this point there is a great deal of uncertainty about just what policy changes will be put into effect saying we should be patient to see what happens. Um, and it's certainly interesting to note that we do have this data coming into March, uh, where at the March meeting for the first time, the US Federal Reserve will in fact be publishing data um, pertaining to policy uncertainty. That's right, and, and I think it's gonna be interesting to see how they interpret that and how they incorporate that. It's gonna be something new for, I guess, the market watch. It's very similar to when they started to publish the blue dots um, in terms of the some of their forecasting as well. It's, it's obviously going to be of interest and uh, give it the market a bit more transparency, transparency in terms of the internal workings of the uh, FOMC and the committee and how it comes up um, to the decisions and with all the information that's provided. So I think it'd be one that uh, you know, the uh, economists and market uh, commentators will watch closely and it'll probably uh, add to the, the flavor and, and potential changes down the line uh, with this additional information. How crucial is it, and you've already flagged this in terms of um, the, all members of the FOMC sort of singing from the same hymn sheet, um, but there's also been some additional commentary coming through separate to uh, US Fed Chair Janet Yellen's comments, um, particularly from um, Stanley Fisher saying if you look at what's been happening to the economy since the 8th of November and to the asset markets, and if you take into account the operation of what people of my age call animal spirits, you will realize that there has been a substantial wealth effect in this economy. Also saying that if there has been a conscious effort to raise expectations for a rate hike, I'm about to join it. How crucial is it that we do in fact have uh, all members of the FOMC um, seemingly in coordination? And certainly, um, Mark, I'd go as far to suggest that that really does um, raise that 
um, the Fed's credibility, which has previously been in question? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 everybody comments that the Fed's credibility has been damaged. I mean, my, my view is that they've always said that the, the interest rate hikes are always data dependent, and they've always pointed to the data um, when they get there as not being strong enough. So in terms of credibility, it, would, it be, would it have been better for the Fed to continue to hike last year and in 2015 uh, when the economy was weak and then send the economy back into recession? No. So I think the Fed's credibility is actually still uh, pretty robust. Um, as, you, as you rightly point out, you know, the regional uh, Fed presidents um, you know, a couple of weeks ago started to talk about you know, the, the, the positive um, kind of strength of the U.S. economy and the increasing likelihood of, uh, of a March hike. And that, again, as you say, was re reiterated again on Friday night with Yellen and Fisher, both, as you say, singing off the same hymn sheet, you know, talking about the hikes that uh, are most likely to, to come through if the data allows it. And as I said, I think the data is, is probably going to be close enough to where the market is expecting to allow the Fed to hike. And once it gets that first one under, under its belt, you know, then it can maybe sit back and relax a bit more. You know, we're not going to get to June and September and say, well, it still hasn't hiked, very similar to 2015, 2016. You know, probably have a bit more time to assess the economy, assess what impact um, Trump's um, policies may have on the fiscal side of things. And as Yellen says, she's got really no visibility in terms of that, uh, and try and figure out you know, what, how strong the US economy really is and whether it, you are going to start to see inflation coming through. Um, because at the moment, it's th that, that part of the equation is still pretty low, and you're still not seeing a huge amount of pressure coming through on the wages side of things. Um, and so whether you're going to see inflation coming through and how that feeds into the fiscal policy as well is, is, is going to be uh, really interesting. But if they do hike in March, it will give the Fed a bit more time just to sit back and relax and just see how that all plays out. Uh, just lastly, Mark, I wanted to touch on China cutting its growth target to 6.5% in 2017. Uh, this coming through alongside um, a series of other targets coming through, particularly around um, CPI, around the budget deficit target, um, and also in terms of uh, what it will be coming through with in terms of reforms. Just love to get your take on this briefly. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, there's a whole swathe of information there. I think the key part that you know, the bond markets and economists are probably focusing on is a slight change in terms of the wording used for a monetary policy. Look, at the moment they're saying it is now prudent and also neutral. That neutral language is, is new and is likely to indicate that they're probably going to move towards a slight tightening bias and may, we may start to see some interest rate uh, rises on the, on the nominal side of things um, just to try to uh, take a bit of steam out of the economy and also just try to manage that transition uh, a bit more appropriately. There's a lot of focus in terms of you know, managing the risks in the economy rather than just going all out for growth. And that's why you've seen that growth forecast cut from 6.5% to around about 6.5% 6 and higher, which is still, from an Australian point of view, very, very uh, good growth. Um, they are looking to maybe reduce and pare back some um, uh, kind of loss-making or marginally profitable businesses on the steel and coal side of things as well. Um, so that's all going to be in, into the mix in terms of how that feeds through into commodity prices as well. But again, you know, I think it's just China managing the transition from to a more market-based economy, more rational allocation of capital pretty well. And I think they've done a, a, a reasonable job so far. You know, not, it's not saying there isn't risks out there, but the, you know, they seem to have a handle on that. And also, I think they've got the, you know, the financial reserves to manage kind of any fallout that, uh, that should uh, uh, arise in the future. Mark, thank you very much for your time this morning. Much appreciate it. Thanks, Natalie. Have a good day.